The kākāpō is the largest parrot in the world. It's also the only flightless parrot, which is part of the reason why, by 1995, predation from introduced species such as cats and rats had seen kākāpō numbers plummet to just 51 birds. Intensive management by the Department of Conservation on offshore predator-free islands has seen the species brought back from the brink of extinction, and now genomics is adding another dimension to the birds' conservation. This Kākāpō Genetics project really kicked off with the sequencing of the Kākāpō genome by a group at Duke University. They sequenced one genome of one Kākāpō, and that's normally what happens for a species. But at the time, there was only 125 Kākāpō in existence, and I, I kind of had a thought, well, we've done one Kākāpō genome. How much more would it take to do all of them? We felt our first job was not necessarily to learn about Kākāpō. It was to learn how do we use this kind of data. What's different between all these kākāpō? Where in their genomes are they different? Doc has been working with Genomics Aotearoa to take the DNA sequences and turn them into useful information that will help the species by determining which birds are best matched for breeding. Genetics, we think, is really important for kākāpō. We have a number of problems with kākāpō that we wanted to try and solve. Number one is probably infertility for kākāpō. We know from previous studies that there is a link between genetics and inbreeding and infertility. So what is causing that? Is it the choice of the partner? Is it something to do with the female? That's the sort of thing that we can really drill down into. We look at their relatedness to all other kākāpō, how genetically unique they are. That's really important. We use the genetic information to make sure that we get as best a match as possible for every female. Once a chick has been successfully bred, the information from its parents' DNA can provide insights into how well it's doing. Is this kākāpō chick thriving or is it in trouble? Do we need to intervene? And to do that, we, we had to predict the growth rate of that chick based on the genome sequence of its parents. So we actually rank our chicks on a genetic priority score. Gold, silver, bronze, and we have a chalk level at the bottom. So they get a ranking of how important they are from a genetic point of view. And then that dictates how much effort we put into that individual. With a population around 250 birds today, any new threat to the kākāpō could be devastating. So when a mysterious disease started killing birds, genomics once again helped provide some clues. We had an outbreak of a fungal pneumonia called aspergillosis in 2019 in kākāpō in a breeding season. It affected a lot of individuals. And genetics played an important role there because what happened was that fungus which causes the aspergillosis was genetically very, very unique. But we thought, let's just sequence the strain of aspergillosis that's in all of these chicks turned out that every bird that was getting the disease was getting the same strain of aspergillus. And that's really weird, right? They should all be getting different ones. And that tells us something about the cause of it, where it came from, because it's something that we hadn't seen in Kākāpō before. We'd only had one case in the last 30 years, and then suddenly we had lots of them all at once. With the identical strain appearing on different islands, the most likely explanation was that the fungus was being spread by humans, possibly those working with the birds. Somehow we're bringing in the strain of aspergillus. So genomics opened that. It's this, exactly the same thing that was done with the COVID response. It's sequence as many COVID genomes as you can because that'll tell us where these things are coming from. As the population continues to grow, having the genomic information for each kākāpō will allow those caring for the birds to make better decisions regarding their management, as well as understanding how to help protect other Tonga species in the future. Genetics is going to play a critical and increasing role in kākāpō conservation in the future. We want to make more kākāpō, we want to make healthier kākāpō, and that's what genetics is going to help us to be able to do.